getting off work. Daddy's got to go to work. Let's do this. Got to change my clothes, Nilla. What's up? What's up? Because I have my hands full. So what's going on now? You just uh, got home from your day job? Yeah, surveying, walking all fucking day, climbing hills, riding in a ranger, wearing a GPS pack, busting ass, thinking about going to my other job all day long. Can't wait to get there. I'm supposed to be there three to fucking eight, uh, three to seven, but I've been getting there around four thirty-five. So I'm trying to talk the boss into letting me work till eight. Yeah. Because there's still daylight. I had the Bieber do before that motherfucker, that's for sure. <laughs> that's pretty classic. Uh, used to be in that crew right there, that's for sure. That was when I was 18 right there. Okay, I'm in the Santa suit, but let's get in the Kabuti boot. Alright. And for good luck, I always wear a Queensryche shirt. That seems to be the forte for this week. Okay, shoes. Tones, bag of shit. Hi. So this is the stuff I have for work. Surveying, but I need to retake it out so that I can work on it again for the other job. So I get this, this. So what do you got? Your walkman, your tape decks, batteries, CD player, shift the bed. This key don't need to be there. Papa Murphy's hat, sunglasses, batteries. Just the things that I need to get. The music in my head. I, the other night, my CD player broke, and I had to dance for two hours with nothing in my ears. Just made up shit in my head. Dancing to the car motions. <laughs> Dancing to people giving me the finger. That's always a classic. And then yesterday, I got the finger from some chicks. That was awesome. The other day I got the finger from one guy who drove by a second time honking and gave me the finger again. Good stuff. So what goes through your mind when uh, someone flips you off? I wish I had a dozen eggs. Ping! Or some sulfur pills or something to make them, their car stink when they, when they hit it. Okay, I got all my shit. Just looking around make sure I don't forget nothing. Cool, okay, I'm ready to walk the fuck out the door. And get on up, get it on, so I can get my free pizza, nigga. Guess I shouldn't be saying that. <laughs> God damn, is that a turd? That's a fucking turd on the floor. <coughs> did I gave you this lighter last night. I lost mine. Right? Morning, morning, morning. So what are you doing here? Why, why are you doing push-ups? Because I use my arms a lot in dancing. And I have to fucking be ready, baby. Oh, my arms have to be ready. All right now I got a pain in my shoulder and I'm trying to get rid of it by doing push-ups. <clears throat> and I use a sledgehammer all day. So that got rid of it too. But sometimes I'll get a pain and it'll shoot up in my neck. And I can't move my arm very well and I can't use my head. Because when I'm in the suit, all the weight of the suit is on my neck. The suit's resting on my head, and it comes down to an angle so my shoulders don't hold up the suit. But the holes in the suit are kind of weird. One lands here, and the other one lands here. So when I'm dancing, that, real, that left side really bugs the shit out of my arm. So when I'm waving, I have to like stick my arm out there kind of a little bit so I can do the wave thing. Because I got big rubber hands on and shit. I'm just saying, when I'm in the suit, you know, I have to do moves like this because you can't see moves like this. You know what I mean? You can't see that shit. Yeah, it's got to be kind of... 
It's gotta, anyway, it's gotta be know, kind of exaggerated. Yeah, I gotta do, you know, stuff like, like this. You know what I mean? I gotta bounce around and kick my legs out and shit. And, but when you're doing this stuff... Well, you can't even see your torso at all, yeah, it, so... It don't all, matter it's it's basically this. only arms and feet. Right, it can't do something like this. Yeah. A lot of bouncing. I gotta do something like this, you know, like... Bouncing like this, you know? And then I do this a lot. And then I do the point. And then I do the turnaround and the point. And I do and I do the pull back. I put and I every pull single around and the push back. And I fall into the street sometimes, you know, I trip off the curb. I'd be like, I'd be like. But they can't see this. Yeah. You know, they can't see that shit. So I gotta do the fucking big moves. And then that hard hat, you know, I gotta really get into it, you know what I mean? So my back is fucking worn out, my knees are shot. But I love it. It's what we do. Okay, let's go fucking do this. You wanted it. Now you got it. Yeah, it's something I wanted to. I have to do it. Let's rock, bitches. Is there a ferret clawing the door open? Yes. Well, let's go. What are we doing? Oh, I gotta grab my shit. Don't stretch your legs. You go in a fucking spasm out there and you get a Charlie horse and then fucking be laying on the ground and people be laughing at your ass. <laughs> oh look, he's having a little spasm. He throw something at him. Yeah, the other day I got, I think I already told you this, but the uh, day before or the other day or yesterday or something, I got blah, 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 pussy. That's all I heard. See, I don't want to wear the hoodie while I'm in a suit, but I have to because the tape recorder that I'm using, because I have badass mixes on tape, I have to put it in the hoodie right here because I can't hold the tape recorder. Because the little one that I have, the motor drive doesn't work very well, and it plays the music like this while I'm out there dancing to the music. It doesn't work. Sometimes I'll hit it, and it'll play slow. The CD player broke. I don't have a fucking iPod because I'm white trash, but I got the tape recorder with the kick-ass mix, so I got to hold it in this... So I'm gonna go inside, grab the suit, I've already clocked in, and we'll do this. Hey, will you make sure I don't have any grass and shit on me? Like, big old grass and chunks. Gotta get the hard hat on just right. Uh, other part of the suit, the old sign, the old ball and chain. Let's go to work. Listen, right now I'm listening to DJ Jazzy Jeff from the Fresh Prince. This is the stuff I'm dancing to in my headphones. Just breaking beats. Is this filming right now? Yeah, just breaking beats, you know, that's what I film to. So I can just keep going, you know, I don't I don't need to sing, I just need to keep going. You just gotta get into it, you gotta get all dancing around. That's the thing about DJs, they just stand there. If I could get a business where I was a dancing DJ, but it's just too much going on with DJ and you can't dance and DJ. So I see why those guys are just tweaking their buttons all night long, tweaking their fucking nipples all night because they can't fucking dance while they're dancing. Lots, the lots of dates. Um, I went to this concert, Two Live Crew, MC Shy D, September 11th, 1987 in Richmond, which was right next to where I was living in Oakland. Herbie Hancock, it's a good one. 
NWA on wax. That's a good one. 20th anniversary edition album. My nephew gave me this shit. He's a good boy. He gives me all the good stuff. Here you go. World class wrecking crew. There's Dr. Dre right there. What is he, 12? Good stuff. Egyptian Lover. That's Two Live Crew's first album. Fat Back, they were a good old band. Black band. Beat Street soundtrack. It's another nephew record that my nephew gave me, DJ Babu. That's excellent. Double album. Uh, those are all rap. Uh, Cheech and Chong. And they're hiding the weed in the car and shit. It's an old album. Collector's item. Another Cheech and Chong. This is the one that had the big uh, rolling paper in it. There was a rolling paper in here, but I don't know what happened to that. Maybe we smoked it. Who knows? It's a good album. There's all kinds of rhythms that are going off in my head. That's why I like to dance, because I'm constantly tapping my fingers, constantly tapping my feet. See, like this is just a part of the record where it's just cutting noises. How many trailer courts are in this town? Trailer courts? Oh, fuck. Probably 30. At least... There's gotta be at least 15. I'm just guessing. I have no idea. That's probably a lot, actually. Probably eight. No, there's a lot. They're everywhere. Rock springs. Oh, my God. We're all stuck here. It's like this pit that nobody can get out of. We all talk highly of ourselves, like we're gonna get out and do something in our lives. And we all just get stuck here. When you moved here as a kid, what was your first impression? I inherited my grandpa's house. My grandpa died and then my grandma died, so I moved here in 83. From California? Yeah, from Cal straight from Grass Valley, California to here. Been here ever since. So, what kind of culture shock was that? <sighs> from being the only white kid in school to um, listen, or dealing with my grandma and her 13 personalities. She was schizophrenic and multiple personalities, which is two different things I hear. She had them both? Yeah, she had them both. She would talk to people that weren't even there. She would freak out and go into another accent. And she would blame me for shit I didn't do. It was crazy. Jesse Zumpf got me this job, so. When he left, I was like, uh-oh. What's gonna become of me? And that was how long ago? That was 1990 and it's 2013. So it's been a while. He quit like two times and I was fired like three times. And then this last, in the last two months I've quit. I quit for two weeks, but I couldn't survive so I had to go back. Let's go up this way. A day in the life of a surveyor is like... How many hours you spend in the truck a day? this truck, um, I would say about 10 on a regular basis. Because you're in the truck before you get to work, then you can clock in, and then you're in the truck still even after work, and then you gotta do your timesheet three times. Everything has to be written down three fucking times. The timesheet, your timesheet, and your diary. So, everything's duplicated, everything's calculated, masturbated, whatever, aided. Yeah, that's right there, those pipeline markers, that's what I do. I don't put the pipeline markers in, but I'm the one who locates the pipeline when we're doing surveys. And that's a marker, that's a marker down there showing you where the pipeline is. But I would have to put 
uh, a locator on the ground, a transmitting device and a receiving device, and then I'd have to spray paint the ground, and then whoever was doing the GPS survey could see where the pipeline was exactly. Because sometimes those markers right there, they're not on. They're like four or five feet off. Some of them are foot off. Some of them are 15 feet off. You'd be, you'd be surprised how far those are off. That's why I have to re-go through there and relocate the line because I don't trust those markers. And that's what my main focus is when I'm surveying is locating things that could kill everybody. That's my main focus. So what I'm doing is I'm setting up my Fiatalite. But we're gonna time it. You need a penny still? We're gonna do a little timing thing, yeah. Watch stuff. Oh! So we're gonna play a little game right here. We're gonna set up this penny on the ground. Then I'm gonna set up on it and we'll see how long it takes me to do it. So I'll give you the watch. It's already on stop mode. That's start and then that's, uh, it's start, stop, and reset. Okay, so I'm gonna leave the, th the gun in its case and everything, so whenever you hit zero, I'll go. There's the penny. Go. What I'm looking for is to be completely level. This is called a bullet case. <laughs> it protects your instrument. Oh, and you can't find the hole. It's got to have hair around it. So now I got to find the penny in that optical plummet, which is right here. There it is. I'm on it. I focus a little bit better so I can see what I'm doing. There's a focus and then there's a focus to the optical plummet. So now that I'm over the penny, I step on my legs, holding the gun so that it doesn't fall off. Okay, we'll say I'm good enough on that. Can I get on the center of the penny using these three screws here, these three leveling screws? Then I have a frog eye up here. I have another frog eye up here. So there's two bubbles that I'm looking at. I get the legs level first. And I give it one last check. That's level. I'm on the center of the penny. How long is that? 146. 146, not too bad, and you can check it too. That bubble's level, and if you look through the optical plummet, I'm definitely on the, the penny. Well, that's when we moved, when Grandma died. She died, and then we moved. But um, the whole time I was thinking, no way, I'm, all my family's in California. So sure enough, we moved out here, and I've been here ever since. Yeah. I haven't gone back. I mean, I lived in... Oakland with my brother for a few months, but that was like eight months. And you've, you've had the same job for 23 years. In 1990, I got hired on surveying, and I, I haven't left. And you've I've been, been married for how long? 15 years. And you have daughters? Two daughters and uh, my wife's son. And I got four ferrets, a dog, three cats, and a frog. So what makes you want to dance? Um, I mean, you know, would you consider it a hobby? profession what's your what, what do you think about dancing well I grew up uh, dancing in my room as anybody would I guess and then I turned it into um, going out in public dancing getting a break dancing crew set up hanging out with dudes who are as serious as I was but not too serious you know what I mean we'd, we'd get our routines together and stuff but we weren't too serious and now the dancing I'm doing now is just kind of a combination of my youth a little bit of comedy, dancing, and putting on a mask, and getting in a suit. Kind of taking my experience from dancing as a kid and turning it into old man dancing, I guess. I want to stay fit, 
So I think that dancing is the best way to go to stay fit. It's better than swimming. I, I think it is. Like if you see that movie Rise, every one of those dancers is just ripped. And that's all they do is they dance. So I want to stay healthy by dancing. And if I can get a job dancing, that's fantastic. And I do have a job dancing, so <laughs> two for one stone. Yeah, I was doing, um, I was trying to do a little stand-up comedy there for a while, so that didn't, I mean, I, I was trying to be good at it, but it was taking a lot of time from my family, me going and sitting in the other room and writing and telling everybody to leave me the fuck alone, you know, and trying to focus on uh, constructing comedy. And my brother Jason did all this. Corner. Some comedian told me not to write shit like that. His aunt Hillary is running for office. He's been here before. He thinks he's funny. And I hope he's here tonight. Let's bring him up right now. TJ Clinton. Come on, let's give it up. You should have saw this one clip and I'll be like, fuck that, it's right here on my videotape. Like the one time I was watching Fear Factor and they were eating potato bugs live. Those potato bugs that are nasty, they were eating them, dude. And I was like, I'm so glad I have this on videotape because nobody would believe that there was this episode that existed. And there it is. So yeah, I videotaped all my kids growing up. I, I take pictures of dinners, like sushi and stuff. I think that's beautiful, you know, when they make the sushi. I, I, I like taking pictures of food. I like taking pictures of memories. It's memories. Because pictures to me and music to me is like time travel. When you first heard that song, when you when you took that picture, you just, you take your brain and it goes whoosh, right back to that moment that that picture was taken or that time you first heard that song. That's why I like music and taking pictures so much and recording things because it I don't have to memorize. It's right there. <laughs> I like memories, but I like to keep the memories. 